Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's really a, an honor to be here tonight. Um, the Lord planted me here 19 years ago, and uh, I've really grown a lot here. I've changed a lot. Like when we say, I'm, I'm nothing like I used to be, I really am not anything like I used to be. <laughs> but um, I want to thank Pastor Hank and Pastor Allison, a bishop. I keep forgetting to call you bishop, I'm sorry, because you're dear to my heart. And bishop sounds far away, but you're really close to me. But um, I want to thank you for the opportunity tonight. Um, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, most of all. Because he's the reason we're here tonight. He's the reason we can live in this different kingdom where we can laugh at the things that the enemy throws at us. He's the reason that we can expect different things because we live in this kingdom where the Lord is Jesus Christ. And we don't have to expect the things that the world expects. Um, when Pastor gave me this um, chapter to read, I read it three times. And um, I looked it over. You know, the world is finally catching up with the Bible, where it says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. That was written many, many, many years ago, and they finally figured it out. But um, I, I'm funny about things like this, but I went and looked up the study of laughter. And it is actually jello from the Greek jelos. Who would have thought that jello came from something scientific? But it did. And um, I also talked to the Lord about laughter. I said, Lord, did you only start laughing since you created man? He said, have you looked at yourself lately? But um, what he said was he has always laughed. We just were made it in his image. Now, they have a, such a word called an anthropomorphism, anthropomorphism, meaning attributing human characteristics to a god, animal, or object. But see, these are people who don't know that we were created in the image of God. That's why we laugh. Because they're trying to figure out why we laugh. You know that babies smile in the womb. You get pictures of babies smiling in the womb. Um, babies smile when they sleep. I mean, they haven't been taught this. They haven't looked at a face that said, oh, I need to do that. It's not something that they're taught to do. It's something that God put in us. And um, in the, in the um, chapter, he talks about the healing power of laughter, which is the title of the chapter. And uh, I want to talk to the Father for a minute. Father, thank you for having me here still for planting me in this wonderful place, the lighthouse, in this cave where I can become a mighty, mighty warrior and woman of God. Thank you that it's out here in the outskirts, Lord, where I'm hidden, safe from the enemy, but also able to see you, Lord. Thank you for all my brothers and sisters, these mighty men and women of valor that you're forming in this place. Father, I thank you for this chapter. I thank you for Joel Osteen. I used to not want to listen to him, and you know that. But thank you that I'm able to receive from your vessels, no matter what they look like or sound like. So, Father, I just welcome you here tonight. Holy Spirit, teach us your word. You're the one who wrote it. And so we know that you can teach it to us the best. And it's the name of your son, Jesus, I ask this, Father. Amen. He talks about his father and how, how he laughed, even when he was in his 70s, how he was always joking and still acting like a child. You know, a smile is a universal sign of happiness. You don't have to know anybody's language to smile at them. A smile is something that doesn't cost anything, but there's so many poor people who really need it. And if you can smile, you know there's actually people who are born without muscles in their face who can't smile. And so a smile is a universal sign of happiness and acceptance. A smile makes you live longer. You know, it boosts the youth hormone 87%. So let me see the response. 
87% of the youth hormone is boosted. It boosts your mood even when you force your smile. You know what? After I started reading this chapter, when I pray in the morning, when I do my devotions, I sit there and I smile. I smile while I pray. I don't close my eyes because he says to watch and pray. I open my eyes and I smile and I pray. And it changes the light inside of me. It makes it brighter. Because nowhere in the word does it say to frown and pray or to be somber and pray. When you're looking at your earthly father who loves you, will you say, Father, please, please, please take care of me. You know how dishonoring that is. You know, it's like you don't believe that he loves you. So when you pray, know that your father is looking at you and smiling at you. The same words that he said to Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We are in Christ and he's pleased with us because of Hebrews 10:17 and Hebrews 8:12. He remembers our sins and iniquities no more. It boosts, it boosts your immune system and relaxes your body. It produces more NK cells, which is natural killer cells, which kills all the cancer cells that roam in our body naturally. Women smile more than men, which is not surprising. But women pay attention. 69% of people think that a woman smiling is more beautiful than a woman with makeup on. So, <laughs> smile, everyone. And so, um, let's see. A smile is recognizable up to 300 feet away. It's the most recognizable facial expression. La laughter reduces blood pressure 40%. 40% less likely to have heart attack. Laughter reduces pain and activates the body's natural tranquilizers. So you get the dopamine, which makes you feel good. Really, it produces it. When a woman looks at her baby and the baby smiles at her, it produces dopamine in her body, which causes her to feel great. And you get that euphoria, you know, that light feeling inside. And you know how we feel whenever we're in, deep in worship here? You can feel that all the time, except for when you're driving. But <laughs> sometimes go, driving home from here, I don't know how I got home. It was the Holy Ghost who drove me. But, um, you know, smiling uses less, less muscles in your face than frowning does, and it's a more natural position of your face. Um, I wanted to see what laughter was described as. A laugh, a lighting up of the face and eyes, and usually accompanied by the emission or explosion or chuckling sounds from the chest and the throat. Now Webster's unabridged, a movement usually involuntary of the muscles of the face, particularly of the lips, with a peculiar expression of the eyes indicating merriment, satisfaction, or derision, and usually attended by a sonorous and interrupted expulsion of air from the lungs. That's definitely Webster, isn't it? <laughs> ah. Now, I did a study on Genesis, well, well, it talks about laughter. It says the sense of humor indicates the capacity for life of the mature believer. And Abraham's laughter is faith breaking through the barriers of hopelessness. Isn't that good? Because the first, the first instance of the word laughter or laugh in the Bible is Genesis 17:17. 17, 17 when the Lord said, told Abraham that he was going to be a father, and he fell on the ground laughing. It wasn't because he was deriding him. It was because he was so amazed and so happy about knowing that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. He was confident. Now, in, in the chapter, he talks about um, hospitals that have um, wards where they have clowns to go help people get better. He talks about his, his mother who was diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer, and instead of believing the report, she took a whole bunch of uh, funny videos and watched them, and 30 years later, she's still cancer-free. Imagine that. 
And, you know, they already discovered the cure for cancer, only people don't want to recognize it. Um, in the chapter, he also talked about laughing like a child. And so I, I looked at that as well. Um, I looked at that and I, I reviewed Jesus and the way he lived. Um, l children laugh over 200 times a day. Adults laugh 14 to 7 times a day. No comparison. We have to know how to work but also know how to pray, how to play and pray. But babies are born with the ability to smile. Even blind babies will smile. Unless you become like children, you will not enter the kingdom of God. The children were trying to get to Jesus. Anybody ever wonder why the children were trying to get to Jesus? Because according to the scripture, it says that Psalm 45, 7, it says that Jesus was anointed with the oil of joy above anyone else. So Jesus wasn't a somber Pharisee. He was not dressed in Pharisee's clothes. He wasn't even dressed with the rabbi's clothes. He was a carpenter. And so these kids, they could see that he was joyful. They could see that he was happy. What kind of a child would want to say, well, I want to go see that guy who looks like he's been baptized in prune juice or lemon juice, you know? Instead, they would run the other way. So I believe Jesus was joyful. I believe he had a very... Joyful demeanor, because the Bible says so. It, it talks about him in Psalm 45, but in Hebrews 1.9, it actually says that it's Jesus. When it talks about number 625, the Lord make his face shine on you. It talks about the Father smiling at us. That's the prayer of Moses, is that he make his face to shine upon us. The Father smiles at us. He doesn't look at you disapprovingly. He's not an old man in heaven with a stick. In fact, he's not old at all. How many of us think that, you, that God is up there with a gray beard and gray hair and wrinkles and an old man? He's not. God is not an old man. But um, whenever you pray and whenever you go to battle, spiritual battle, Know that your Father is approving of you. Whenever you go into healing. In 1993, I went to a Rodney Howard Brown conference because I wanted to see what that laughter was all about. I had a pastor that, it, it wasn't here, I had a pastor that said it was of the devil. And I wanted to see for myself. So my mom and I went to Carpenter's Home Church in, in Lakeland. And um, we went in and sat down on the front seat. And I just kept falling over. I couldn't sit up. And I said, Mom, there's something wrong. I have to go to the restroom. I've got to wash my face. And so I crawled up the aisle to the restroom. I mean, I mean, literally, hand over hand. There were other people crawling, too, so I didn't feel so bad. But... Um, I finally got to the bathroom, and there were people in there laying on the, in the bathroom, laying on the floor, laughing their heads off. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I, I, and I said, I can't hardly stand up. Something is definitely wrong. And so I went out, and they, they were so full that they said, everybody line up outside the sanctuary in a circle, and we'll pray for you. All I know is like a blast of light hit me. I don't even know, I know if anybody touched me, but I stood there with my hands up, and it felt like a blast of light hit me, and I fell face down on the floor. Not face up, face down. And um, I, I laughed and cried. It was a messy sight. I, I mean, dignity was out the window. But um, I want to tell you, that laughter healed the brokenness in me. And that same laughter has been given to you not only to heal you physically, but to heal the brokenness in you as well. And, and it's a secret because a lot of people don't think about the power of laughter. He, he talks in here about healing your body. But you know that laughter can heal your relationship with your family. Laughter can heal your relationship with your wife. You know that that same the same endorphins and the same dopamine that she receives from her baby, she can receive from her husband. And you can give that as well to him. 
So together, it binds you closer together. Laughter breaks through because people think so little of it. It's almost like speaking in tongues. People don't even think about it. It's like a, a weapon that they don't even realize they have. Do you know that when you smile, the enemy is completely confused? He's like, I keep throwing things at them. I keep doing this, and I mess that up. I put traffic in the way, and I put these rude people on the phone, and she's still laughing, and she's still smiling. What can I do? That is spiritual warfare. <laughs> Real simple. You don't even know, have to know how to say, oh, Father, thou art wonderful. Thou art presenteth here in this placeth. You know, you don't have to know all this stuff. This, the gospel is simple. You know, it talk, the Apostle Paul talks about us not departing from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. He talked about simple things. He was a carpenter. He was around fishermen. And uh, he, had, he went to parties of these crazy tax collectors and prostitutes. And he told the Pharisees, you know, they're entering the kingdom be before you are. Because they thought they were okay. But the thing about laughter is God has always laughed. And he created us in his image so that we would laugh as well. And when we're joyful when we are full of happiness, we choose to be happy, that is a testimony to the goodness of God. You know, it talks in the Old Testament about Moses saying, Lord, show me your glory. And he said, yes, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. That is the glory of God. And even in the scripture where it says, where it says that he went, let me see the scripture where it talks about, yes, Psalm 126, 2. Let's turn there. Psalm 126, 2. I always wondered about that because um, sometimes in the old days here at the lighthouse, we used to have, these, have to open the windows in the small chapel, and you could hear us down the street, remember? People would say they could always tell when we were having service because they could hear us down the street. Psalm 126, verse 2. Might help if I get there, too. This is a scripture that tells me about the testimony of laughter in the life of a believer too many times, those of us who have been around church people or religion, I know that I used to look at it and say, I don't want to be anything like them because nobody was ever happy. Everybody was so sad. And it was like, why would I want to serve a God who wants me to be sad? And then when I finally met Jesus, I didn't meet a doctrine. I didn't meet a church. I met a person, and his name was Jesus. And he healed me. Even though I didn't want him, he healed me. And since 1993, August 16th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 1993, I have been becoming more and more intimate with him and becoming and learning more and more about him and being more and more amazed. It never gets boring because he's infinite. There's always a new facet to learn. There's always going to be more. You can't be bored. If you're bored being a believer, you're not really digging. You're not really eating. You're not really feeding yourself the word. Once you start eating the word and realize that the one who wrote the word is with you and can explain everything to you, you'll never get tired of it. You're going to want more and more, believe me. Um, Psalm 126, verse 2. Oh, I'm going to start with one because it has to be together so you know what we're talking about when the Lord brought back the captives to Zion we were like those who dreamed it seemed so unreal then were our mouths filled with laughter and our tongues with singing then they said among the nations the Lord has done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us we are glad he turned to freedom our captivity and restored our fortunes O Lord as the streams in the south are restored by the torrents. 
They who sow in tears shall reap in joy and singing. He who goes forth bearing seed and weeping at needing his precious supply of grain for sowing shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep with him. But where it says that the Lord has done great things for them, how are they going to see the evidence of God's goodness in your life if you choose not to be happy, if you choose not to laugh? How are they going to see it? Are they going to see it by your piety? By your coming here every time the doors are open? By your sour demeanor? By your irritation? No. We can choose to smile, which would be a testimony to God's goodness. Not only will it heal us, but you know your smile can heal somebody else. It's something so simple, but something so profound the healing that comes through laughter. Um, another book that I read said that laughter is jogging for your insides. And so sometimes when I'm standing up there singing, the Lord is telling me funny things, and so I end up laughing. I know sometimes I tell Nikki, Nikki <laughs> and Christine what he's telling me, and they probably look at me strange. But, you know, the Lord has a sense of humor. If you look at his creation, if you look at the things he made, you know he does. Look at a giraffe, a platypus, a hippopotamus. I mean, monkeys, for goodness sake. He knew that one day there would be people who thought we came from them. He has to chuckle now and then when he says that. I know they're going to think they came from these people, <laughs> these, these animals that I'm creating. But um, he talks about that. And um, in the end, he says that we can laugh by faith, knowing that God has already written the final chapter. God has already recorded the victory in your favor. Now, one thing that really gets me when I, when I think about laughter is that we can laugh because we know the end of the story. Whether we live or die, we belong to him. We have no fear of death. Because death to us is to be present with God. And yet we as Christians, we choose not to live a daring life. Not to take this adventure called the way. Not to be the light and the salt that we should be because we're afraid of what people will say. But truth be told, we have an audience of one who's always cheering us on. We have an audience of one who laughs in the heavenlies. And we can laugh with him too. And, and these people who don't believe in Jesus Christ are throwing themselves on swords and exploding themselves, and they're going to hell. And yet we as believers are not bold enough to say, wait a minute, let me tell you the truth. You want to be happy? I know you're, you're looking for happiness. You're looking for love. This is what everybody in the whole world is looking for, and it can only be found in Jesus Christ. And so, again, about the power of laughter. Laugh at the enemy. Laugh in every situation. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you something funny. He will, I guarantee it, because he is the funniest. Well, I guess he has to be the funniest. He's the creator of humor. He's the creator of the funny bone. <laughs> but um, if you choose to laugh and be joyful, it's something very simple, but something very powerful. It not only will heal you, according to his word, it will also heal somebody else. That's all I have.